So, welcome back. This um, time we are going to be doing experiment number two. Experiment number two is called angular motion or rotational motion. And uh, like most other experiments that we're going to be doing this summer, it has two parts. The first part is called centripetal force. The second part is called moment of inertia, or actually in the lab manual, they call it rotational inertia. It's the same thing, just, uh, just different words. And we are going to use the very same uh, main apparatus, but set it up differently to study centripetal force first, and then uh, a moment of inertia or uh, uh, rotational inertia afterwards. So let me show you how you can set it up for centripetal force. First of all, you have an apparatus that looks like this. It has a vertical shaft that is free to rotate on a bearing surface. Okay. And um, there is a motor that's uh, attached to one end of the apparatus that will drive the shaft. How will this motor drive the shaft? Through this drive belt. So you attach the drive belt to the shaft of the motor. And when you turn the motor on, the uh, energy from the rotating shaft of the motor will be transferred to the vertical, uh, vertical shaft and it will rotate. Because this is a constant speed motor, the rotational speed of this motor, uh, of this uh, vertical shaft rather, will also be constant too. So we will have a constant rate of rotation. And um, what happens if the speed of this rotation is a little bit um, too small or a little bit too large? Well, on this rotating shaft on the motor, we have different grooves. Each groove is slightly different uh, diameter than the other groove. So, since this is a constant speed motor, in other words, the rotating shaft is turning up, uh, you know, uh, at a constant rate, if we put this drive belt in a groove that's smaller, that has a smaller diameter, that means for each rotation, less drive belt will go by. Since less drive belt will go by for each rotation, that means um, this drive belt will be turning this uh, shaft slower. So if we want to make um, this shaft uh, rotate faster, we have to put the drive belt in a groove uh, of bigger diameter. Okay, now let me just turn it off for, for a moment. Okay. And I'll show you how you're going to set up the experiment. You take this um, crossbar, which has um, a string attached to one end, and um, you pass it through the hole that is uh, 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 like drilled at the top of this vertical shaft, making sure that uh, the string is on the same side of the shaft as this eye bolt. So you just pass it through like this. Okay. And there's a little flat area in the middle of this crossbar. You just clamp the screw like this, so it, it's, um, it doesn't move uh, sideways, okay? Now, what do we do now? We add a mass, a hanging mass, a suspended mass, to the end of the string like this. In the lab manual, this um, hanging mass is called the bob, okay? Now, since we, have, um, since we have a mass attached to one end of a rotating shaft, okay, we want to have it counterbalanced. So we take this additional mass here and we attach it to the other end of this crossbar. And there's a little flat area here. We attach the screw um, tightly to this little flat area. So this mass does not slide, okay? Now, we want to actually uh, um, attach this bob to the actual rotating shaft with a spring. So what we, we do is this. We take one of the springs that are provided and we attach it like this. And um, you will notice, as I spin this faster and faster and faster, the extension of the spring gets greater and greater, okay? Now, our goal is um, 
using this um, motor, which will be attached to, to this um, vertical shaft. Okay. And um, I can move the, the motor back and forth slightly. Okay. So we have uh, uh, enough tension in the drive belt. If it's a little bit too loose, like if, if it's like this and it's a little bit too loose, uh, very little energy will actually be transferred to the vertical shaft. If it's um, like this, a little bit too tight, maybe it will actually, uh, you know, uh, prevent it from turning as freely as it should. So we just adjust this platform where the motor is attached to. So the tension uh, on this drive belt is not too, too loose and not too, too tight. Okay. And um, we turn on the motor and you'll notice um, it'll start to, to rotate. And it'll take about um, a, 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 a few seconds, you know, uh, for it to reach a, a constant rate of rotation, okay? So, uh, you notice now that the bob is, is not hanging vertically anymore, and the spring has been extended down um, uh, quite a bit. We want the bob to be hanging vertically. So, uh, how can we actually make the bob hang vertically? Um, place this drive belt in a smaller diameter. So if you bring it down to a smaller diameter, what will happen to the rate of rotation of this vertical shaft? It will actually now uh, slow down and the extension of the spring will be less and the bob now will be hanging pretty well vertical. So once we actually reach a constant rate of rotation where the bob is uh, hanging vertically and the spring has of course been extended, we position this pointer in such a way that uh, the bob, the tip of the bob, passes over the tip of the pointer. So, once we actually see that the tip of the bob is passing directly over the tip of the pointer, we clamp this pointer so it doesn't move, turn off the uh, rotating uh, shaft with the bob, and we measure the distance between the tip of the, uh, the pointer to the center of uh, the axis of rotation. That distance will be the radius of, um, of the circle that's created by this uh, bob that's going around. Uh, the center of the mass of, of this bob is here and um, because the bob is hanging vertically, uh, the pointer, which is now aligned with the tip of the bob, is pointing towards the center of the mass. So, when you measure from the tip of the pointer to the center of the axis of rotation, the radius of rotation will be the distance between those two points. Okay. So, um, in this experiment, we um, want to determine the centripetal force. Okay. And uh, to determine the centripetal force, we will also need to use a stopwatch to measure the time for 10 rotations. So this is um, the purpose of the stopwatch. Uh, I won't be doing the whole experiment for you or taking any measurements, okay? But um, this is what you have to do. Now, here's um, um, the other thing that you're gonna be doing. With the motor turned off, you bring uh, this apparatus over like this to the edge of the table. You attach this little paper clip with a string, which uh, is supposed to be massless. And it is uh, a very small mass or a negligible mass compared to the mass of the bob. And you pass it over this pulley here, okay? And what are you going to do? You are going to um, add discrete masses to uh, this uh, string. So you get an extension due to gravity that was equal to the extension of the, of, uh, the spring when it was actually rotating due to centripetal. So once this hook, which has a mass already uh, printed on it, is attached to the end of the string, you keep adding discrete masses, starting off with the larger masses first, and then finishing off with uh, some of the lighter masses, until you get an extension of the spring, so the tip of the bob and the tip of the pointer are the same extension as when they were spinning. Once you have achieved this, then the force of gravity pulling this way, Fg, 
will be equal to the centripetal force pulling it, uh, inwards. And uh, we'll leave it uh, like this at this stage, uh, you know, otherwise we'll be doing the, the entire experiment for you. And we want you to get, um, uh, you know, to familiarize yourself with some of the basic concepts, okay? So now we are going to um, 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 end here and uh, introduce you to uh, another part of the experiment called um, rotational uh, inertia.